Armor was easily, this chain was easily put on and taken off compared to leather or plate. Because leather and plate, you have to, you have, to have straps. You don't. You just have it hanging. Having it loose is fine because that gives it a chance to have to move to take some of the impact, and then it hits you. Then it hits your, but it doesn't hit you, it hits your padding, and then it goes in to, you, so that all of that pressure that is diffused as much as possible. So between diffusion and deflection, you've reduced almost all of the impact you've got from, it, from a point. So most of the swords at the time that you can see start to get nicer points as, as time goes on. With, with more and more chainmail showing up on the scene, the points start to be more, be more important. Before, when it was leather, the blades, you see these things like the falchion, where it's basically a big axe <laughs> blade where it comes forward and it bends and it's, it's for cutting things. And you can cut leather, you can cut things like that but very easily. And the, the scimitar is also for, for cutting and slicing on horseback. It's a bent sword, it's for a horseman. And the, the katana is for a horseman. That's what they were, were originally, horse archers. So you, the, all they think bent is for a horseman to be able to cut and keep moving. So these things are deflecting the arm, the arm is deflecting it, the arm is just, uh, trying to diffuse these blows. And it's pretty, it's pretty heavy. I mean, a halberd is about 20 pounds. Th this is a coif. It's about five pounds. But when you're wearing it, it doesn't feel like it when you put it in your hand. But honestly, if you put all your shoes and your clothes in your hand, it weighs about three or four pounds. And it's weird to put it in your hand and, and have hang it. It's much, it, it feels more accurate to what it would do if you actually put it on. Holding it out in your hand is going to feel much heavier than it really is uh, to, to your body. Because your body, these things were designed to diffuse the weight over you as well. So you don't feel like, oh wow, this is really heavy. You know, a glove that held out here is much heavier than a glove actually put on. Because then now, now it's going over all of my hand instead of just that one piece. Now, I haven't done it yet, but you're you fronted front in leather so you can be able to hold on to your sword properly. Because again, if the rings are sliding around perfectly for deflecting the, your opponent's weapon, it's also going to slide around on your own grip, which you don't want, so you'll front it in leather. I haven't done it yet, but that's the leather I'm going to use to do it. So all of these times people are doing this, the Vikings uh, take their whole families and they actually put their uh, whole families to work every winter, and that's all you do during the winter, is you're going to be making, you're going to take a rod like this, you're going to make what I call a worm, from, from it by putting it into the teeny little hole and then rotating it around and around and around from being a spool of wire, put it on the pole, it becomes this, you, you cut them, they become this, and you put them together to make chain mail. Clearly it's a long process. It's a lot of time consumption. There's little errors in the way that they come together. So, because you can see that these things are done this way, you can feel that this would, be take, this would take a lot of time and effort to put it together. So, what you do is you have everybody build it for the males. Uh, please don't uh, bend them too much because it will bend the, the links that I'm actually working with, so keep them pretty straight. You can warp it, but don't like, fold it in half. The, then the Viking would go out and, and take care of other people's stuff and come back with it. The other thing is because everybody was using the same pattern, this 4 one pattern, you could cannibalize gear. You could take one person's gear and make it your own because it's the same basic shape, it's the same basic function, it's the same basic pieces. Now also, I'm only working with one pole, I'm only working with one thing, but other, we have examples where people will cannibalize from smaller equipment. So you have smaller rings and bigger rings mashed up together, partially because of things like this, where you would actually just get an overlap piece as you go along, and you just use that ring anyway, because metal's expensive. You're not going to 
you need to worry about it. But if it's too bad, you throw throw it back to the blacksmith and he'd remelt it and make more wire for you and hand it over to you. The other thing is wire, because it is pretty thin, the, the quality control can be really good because you can see most of what you're looking at is most of the material. There's not much inside that you can't see by just doing this after each time you cut it. So your quality control means your metal is better. There's less um, holes or, or problems or things. Um, so you have high quality metal covering your body. And this lasts from that 350 BC, 400, 350 BC, all the way through time. All the way up to who, uh, where I'm going to get in the end. So it's almost the exact same patterns, the exact same functions. Chainmail really doesn't change from then to the end. Now, let's see if it's the right one. Okay. Modern soldiers, myself included, were carrying actually more weight than they were. They carried roughly about, about 30 pounds, and we're carrying roughly about 50 pounds. We're carrying more weight and less maneuverable because we have a single plate. These, these plates, these sappy plates here, are single solid hard plate to take a bullet. So we're taking, we have more weight, we have less function and move, maneuverability, and so it's actually it's not that we're more armored, it's we're much, much less armored. And there's a reason for that, and we'll get to that. But we are less armored with more weight than they were. Now there's two ways to make chainmail, basically. There's two different versions of this. There's either you can flatten the tire ring and put a rivet in, or you just put a rivet in. And this makes it a little stronger. It only makes it really a little stronger because you can see a lot of examples where this part right here, where it's attached to that, that will break. But it's less likely than this just reopening. But if you have solid metal like this, this is uh, 14 gauge steel. It's pretty sturdy stuff. This is something like 22, 30 gauge. It's really thin. You can bend that with your fingers. I do. That's how I made that. I bent it with one of these and my fingers. It's really small. You wouldn't make armor out of that. You make art out of that size. So, because you're actually working with a sturdy material, and when you look at the Roman example, which I had at the beginning, theirs is, it looks like to me, let me back up here, it looks like it doesn't have any bump that I would expect. It doesn't have, look at this, it doesn't have that. Actually, this, this one might. Is that that, like, the little. Bump, but a lot of examples don't have that bump where, where you'd expect to have uh, a rivet make a bump. A lot of examples don't. All both of these examples here don't. And it's my belief that the, the Roman soldiers, on a whole, probably most of them, didn't have it riveted because that way they could just produce more of them faster. It's, it's a fast simple, easy way of getting out there. And it's still sturdy. It's still very durable. I, I banged this a whole bunch of times, and it's you know, with some serious points, and it has never popped a ring uh, at all. Go ahead. So I have a question, because modern steel is not quite at all what steel or metals of that era were. So what exactly was it made from? Was it made well, from here's the, the difference is how much carbon we have in ours now, and how much control we have over that carbon. That's the right. difference in our steel. Well, what you had is more iron and less carbon. It's vastly different. It's vastly so different, but it's doing different. They it's doing able the same to thing. They control everything the same way. Right. And they had blacksmiths, so that's right. what I mean. Is because that's a much more brittle metal back right. then, because they weren't able to take all the. But that only works. That's only one link at a time being brittle. So your right. carbon content. So you could be able to check. And yes, you would, on a regular basis, have to throw back to, to the blacksmith links. But because you're working one link at a time, you can, you can do that quality control much more effectively than a plate. Right. But it wasn't but you, steel. Was it it wasn't steel? steel? Yes, yeah. it was steel. steel. Absolutely. Okay. The reason why it's an entirely different process is so that a computer can monitor it versus right. just checking it afterward. But they've done tests on Viking swords, the ones with the goofy name that is in a word, in, 
that is actually embossed in the sword, and that still is the, exactly the same as the still we use for, for firearms. It's the same right. carbon content still from the Viking sword as a current one. The process is a little different, but the content of, of the steel is the same. And so steel is really steel. There's a little bit of difference. Yes, but there's, a, there's a big difference between the impurities being able to be taken out because that's why. And that's why you have. That's, that's why, why you use wire over plate. Being, right. U.S. steel became in, came into being because. Because they can make plates. Because they, they can make way rolls and sheets in a more efficient way. Right. And, and, and that's the big. Computers. That's the big pieces. That's the. That's the poles. That's the I beams. That's the stuff that is huge pieces being high quality versus only being able to make this size high quality. How did they roll that out? How did they make it so Most small? of the time what you do is you roll it out while it's warm, uh, while it's red hot, right. and, you're, and you're gonna have a, a big pole, basically a huge version of this, and you start it and you roll it, and it's, sometimes you do it while it's hot enough that it's actually running out of it. It's, it's white hot and it, it's actually being rolled onto it and so it's hot and being put onto it. Now often also, because you're adding it to carbon, so you do is you put a wood pole, put a leather around it, and as it's melting on, it's melting into it. It's carbon is being melted on into it by, by burning the leather as it goes around. So it's actually adding carbon as you make wire. And that's why, because this is a vastly different process than a plate. And that's what, what you're talking about by saying the quality control is much, much better now. And most of quality control 